Duke Capital G here, giving you guys another amazing deck profile. As I told you guys in my last video, these deck profiles are going to be regularly scheduled content on this channel. At least I'm going to shoot for one every couple of weeks. That gives me enough time to get all the cards together. But I have so many amazing deck profiles that I think that you guys will really enjoy. A lot of creative ideas. And if you guys enjoy these videos, you'll want to see more. Just uh, let me know in the comment section below. And by giving this video a thumbs up the, re the reaction to the harpy deck profile was overwhelmingly positive so i thought i'd bust out one of my more trollier decks but keep in mind these decks are built to be as competitive as humanly possible and just because this is a troll deck does not mean it is not fully capable of topping an event so we've got exodia on the docket and i'm going to show you guys what i'm working with this deck actually can stop the meta in its tracks specifically if the opponent is playing a combo deck this deck is excellent against combo deck so let's go ahead and jump right into it of course because it is exodia we are playing the uh the five pieces of exodia as our win condition now sadly there isn't really a backup plan in this deck assembling all five pieces of exodia in our hand that is the win condition there is no alternatives you got to make sure that you get to these pieces as quickly as possible exodia in my opinion and the reason why it's it's historically just struggled is because of two reasons number one exodia always trying to or it always kind of had to win turn one and if you didn't you just lost the duel this deck doesn't have that problem number two a lot of the power monsters and exodia cards like treasure panda royal magical library if they ever got stopped you basically auto lost the duel like if your opponent had impermanence effect valor anything to stop it you just lost this deck also doesn't have that problem there is only one normal summon we are never putting our exodia pieces on the field so don't even think about doing that our only normal summon in this deck is three copies of Lilith Lady of Lament. You guys should know exactly where I'm going with this, but Lilith is an excellent normal summon because it can get us to our trap cards. Um, specifically, like it just gets us to kind of more draw cards. A lot of the traps in this deck are just the draw cards so that we get to Exodia faster. If you didn't want to run Lilith, the only other card I would highly suggest would probably be Card Card D because Card Card D, you just normal summon it. Then at the end phase, you get two draws. Like I think Card Card D can also be pretty excellent that is it for the monsters you do not run a high monster count in exodia because you're not really summoning all that often to our spells you guys know one of my favorite spell cards in the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh! is Pot of Extravagance. Exodia doesn't have any extra deck monsters, so we don't care about the extra deck at all. We're just looking to get Pot of Greed. Um, basically, every time that we see this card, it's just Pot of Greed. We really don't run any other draw cards. We can't run things like Card of Demise or Pot of Desires because those just naturally conflict with Exodia. So this is our best draw option in the game, and we're going to take advantage of it by running three copies. Um, in addition to the three extravagance we are running three copies of pot of duality since pot of duality does not draw it does not conflict with uh, the copies of extravagance and i like this card because it just digs deeper into our deck it lets us see three more cards and it lets us add any of those cards to our hand we were never special summoning in this deck there's no special summoning so you don't got to worry about that and then because we're a scumbag don't hate me don't hate me because of this guys as i said i'm trying to make this deck as competitive as humanly possible and actually be able to stand up to the meta we are playing three copies of mystic mind aka one of the most hated cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. look mystic mind it may be a degenerate card and everybody may hate it but damned if it isn't good for exodia the problem with exodia as i said before was it always had to win turn one or it basically had no way of defending itself this card is that way of defending itself you don't really summon monsters in exodia or at least you're never going to summon more than one monster Monster. Mine slows the game down to a screeching halt. It makes decks like Salaman great, Thunder Dragon, Orcus. Basically says you ain't doing anything with monsters this game. You're not going to be able to attack as well. This deck can almost always win by turn three at the least. So basically, unlike the Mystic Mind Burn decks where you're giving your opponent turn after turn after turn of Wave Motion Cannon, giving them the opportunity to top a Twin Twister and kill you, this deck just gives your opponent generally two or three turns and then you're going to win. And the great thing about the um the, like the great thing about mine in this deck is even the, even the decks like sky striker sky striker always have a good matchup against mine decks and ultra guys they can get their monsters off the field with like personal spoofing and stuff those decks don't have enough offense to actually kill you and that while they can you know maybe get rid of some of the burn cards 
the burn player needs to win exodia you keep all your powerful cards in your hand so like even the control decks don't really the control decks that can run mine even they're not good against this build of exodia so it's kind of like a double whammy and it's the reason why mine is just like ridiculously good in this deck our final spell card is upstart goblin the mystic mind burn decks do not run upstart goblin simply because um they don't want to give you another like basically it would kind of give you another turn of wave motion cannon this deck does not win with burn damage so so there's really no reason not to run this card. Honestly, I just feel like Mystic Mine Exodia is just significantly better than Burn because it's so much faster and your power cards are kept in your hand, not on the field. So you don't have to worry about like Sky Striker cards blowing them up. They can't blow up Exodia pieces in your hand. To our traps, we play three copies of Netaverse. Another reason why we got to run this deck now is because this card just got hit in the OCG <laughs> along with uh, Mystic Mind. So yeah, this could be our only opportunity to kind of exploit the power of this deck. Netaverse gets us our Mystic Minds during our opponent's turn, tells them that they ain't playing no Yu-Gi-Oh and that we're just going to sit here and draw those pieces of exodia we're playing three copies of trap trick this card might not work with metaverse if it ends up getting limited to one but as of right now in the tcg where all of these cards are at three we're going to play it trap trick essentially just gets metaverse from your deck lets you activate it immediately and then you get mine on field then your opponent's not playing any Yu Gi Oh. and then to my favorite part of this deck the rest of these traps because all of our other trap cards are just power draw cards and i love this man this deck is built and it operates very similarly to chain burn so we're we're playing three copies of Jar of Greed. This is just a self-replacing card. Set it, flip it over, draw an additional card, thin your deck out. But also, very importantly, it puts counters. It basically builds uh, chain counters. So we're playing this deck like Chamber, and you guys will see what I mean in a second. We're playing three copies of Legacy of Yadagurusu. It's essentially the same exact card as Jar of Greed. Your opponent is never really going to have a Spirit Monster on their side of the field. If they somehow do, I believe you get to draw two cards, but basically just think of this as another copy of Jar of Greed. Same exact results. We're playing three copies of Reckless Greed. We are some greedy boys, and we want all the greed. So we're playing three copies of Reckless Greed. It does skip your next two draw phases, but usually you'll end up with these powerful chains where you're drawing like four or five cards you'll usually end up drawing another copy of reckless greed in these chains also with this many draw cards ash blossom is never going to stop you <laughs> let alone if your opponent can even use ash blossom because of the mystic mind that's probably on the field but yeah one ash blossom isn't stopping all this draw power as I said before, we play this deck very similarly to the old school Chain Burn decks, and that means running three copies of Accumulated Fortune. So you want to build those chains. Ideally, you want to let your opponent activate a card and then just activate all your draw cards, this being the final card. And usually if you get like, sometimes you'll draw six cards in a chain, you let your opponent activate a card, then you go like Jar of Greed, Legacy of Yada, Reckless Greed, Accumulated Fortune. I mean, you're drawing like six cards at that point, you're going to win the duel, you're almost certainly going to draw more copies of reckless greed and they're just not going to know what to do they won't be able to really do anything um finally for our uh three ofs when it comes to the draw cards i like to play three copies of good goblin housekeeping a lot of people don't even know about this card i think it's from like flaming eternity it's a it's a dm card if i'm not mistaken it's old school and basically to kind of summarize it it's like a little phantasme right so you draw cards equivalent to the number of good uh, good goblin housekeepings in your graveyard plus one so the first copy doesn't really do that much but as you activate more more copies of this card it gets progressively stronger and one thing that i like about this build again that the original mystic mind burn deck struggles with is if you ever open with multiple copies of mine it just kind of feels dead this deck lets you put your minds back into your deck and draw closer to exodia so this uh, card is excellent plus it's just another card that like adds chain links to your chain for accumulated fortune our final trap card is jar of avarice this is our only basically like fallback plan if your opponent somehow gets your exodia pieces in the graveyard this is the only way you have of putting them back in your deck so <laughs> Don't let them discard your Exodia pieces. Ideally, it shouldn't happen, but if you're foolish enough to summon your Exodia pieces and then they get destroyed, this is your backup plan to put it back in your deck. Another card also 
self-replacing draw card that adds a chain counter or add, that adds a chain link for your accumulated fortune and because yes i know that um you know i'm an evil scumbag and i'm playing a mystic mind deck the only extra deck that are the only extra deck archetype i feel appropriate are evil heroes this is actually the reason it took me so long to profile this deck I was waiting for all of these e -er, uh, evil heroes to show up then. It's kind of hard to hunt down these cards. So we play Infernal Wing. We play Infernal Sniper. Uh, we're also playing Melissa's Edge. I, I guess when um, the new evil hero support comes out, I'll basically have my extra deck set. We're also playing some uh, evil hero Lightning Golems. I actually had these. Um, I think I had two of these from the original Gladiator's Assault from like way back in the uh, the uh, GX days. We've got some copies of um, Evil Hero Dark Gaia. And then we ended off with three copies of Evil Hero uh, Wild Cyclone. Now, one card you guys might wonder about is ledger of ledger main i do not like ledger of ledger main and i think it's kind of obvious the problem with ledger of ledger main is kind of simple it's the fact that if you activate the card and you banish one of your exodia pieces you 100 cannot win the duel for at least three turns and in those three turns like bad stuff can happen i just feel like it's not really worth the risk as you guys see there's no solemn judgment there are no dark bribes there are no ways of stopping your opponent's twin twister essentially you're just trying to outspeed them and win the duel before they get to those cards it's not like you know the burn decks where you're trying to grind them for three four or you're trying to grind them for five six seven turns you're trying to win with this deck turn three guaranteed and ledger ledger main basically stops you from doing that but i feel like exodia is highly competitive and because some of these cards might get hit on the FNL list, this is basically our best chance to play the deck. Anyways, if you guys want to see more of these amazing deck profiles, just leave it in the comment section below or give the video a thumbs up. Thank you guys for watching. As always, subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos.